The following segment is sponsored by Smith Injury Law and 300hurt.com. Nobody wants to imagine being hurt while on the job, but if it happens, the more you understand about workers' comp, the better. Today we're talking about the difference between an independent contractor and an employee in workers' comp, and it's not as simple as it sounds. Richard Smith is here from Smith Injury Law to talk about it this morning. Hi, Richard. Good morning, Margaret. Um, Independent contractors are not covered by workers' compensation insurance, but depending on how the employer treats them, they may in fact be employees, right? That's correct. It's not just how you pay them. That's what most employers think. If I just pay somebody cash or I pay them one of 1099, then, 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 then they're not my employee, but that's not correct. It, it depends on the four factors to determine whether they're actually an employee or not. Right. As we'll get into those. You're not winning benefits then for independent contractors. You are proving that these people are in fact employees based on those four factors you talk about. So in South Carolina, the first factor considered by the Workers' Compensation Commission is direct evidence or right of exercise of control. What's that? Well, that's basically controlling the employee. If you, if you tell them what time to come to work, how much time they have for lunch, what time they have to be finished, uh, you control how they're gonna do the job, uh, what uh, materials to use, If it's, you know, the more control would you exercise over that individual, the more likely they're your employee and not independent contractor. Okay, and the second factor the commission considers is the furnishing of equipment. Yes, this is very common in the construction industry where they'll go pick up people to come work for them, pay them cash, but they're furnishing them all the equipment, they're providing transportation, they're providing them all the tools of the trade, And then they're saying that they're an independent contractor when they are, in fact, an employee. And the third factor that is considered is method of payment. What do we need to know there? Well, basically, if a person is being paid as an employee, they're taking out taxes on them, then they are your employee. There's no other issues to be decided. But what happens often is employers think that if they pay somebody cash or they pay them as a 1099, that alone makes them an independent contractor, and it's not. It depends on the other factors. Finally, the Workers' Comp Commission looks at the right to fire. What do we need to understand there? Well, as simple as it sounds, if you can fire somebody, uh, not just because you don't like the job that they did, but because they're not doing the job the way you want them to, if you have control over them such that you can fire them, if they're late to work, if they're if they miss time from work, etc., it's kind of the same as number one. It's based on the on the idea of control. If you control them and you can hire or fire them at will, then they're more likely an employee. All right, that was a big takeaway. Depending on how the employer controls the claimant in the performance of the work, that claimant could be employee instead of an independent contractor when it comes to workers' comp. A lot of people don't realize that. Anything else you want people to know before we go today? Well, basically, the, a lot of times workers' comp claims are denied on this issue. Mm-hmm. So if you're seriously injured, and you were basically an employee, but they chose to pay you cash, don't think you don't have a case. Call our law office, we can help. I've won many of these cases in the past, and it's really difficult for employers to win this argument if they are controlling these people as if they were an employee. Absolutely, well, uh, great information at Smith Injury Law. Your practice areas include personal injury, workers' compensation, car and truck collisions, and social security disability claims. Um, People can contact you by calling 300 Hurt or visiting 300hurt.com. Richard Smith of Smith Injury Law, thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Margaret.